What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, JB, and I am here today with a review for Black and Crew Chicago. This is season six. This is episode seven. It's titled, It's So Hard, It's, yeah, It's So Hard to Say Goodbye. And that is a true, true, true statement in itself. That is really hard to say goodbye. So you guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump right into the video, okay? All right, so the episode, it opens up. So we, we're over at Second City, Inc., the mood is really down, you know, since the crew has found out about Charmaine's mom's passing. And then, you know, Jess comes in and she's trying to figure, you know, fill out where the crew is at right now. And like I said, they're just down due to the whole, you know, Charmaine mom's passing. So she also tells the crew, like, you know, so Ryan, he's out in New Orleans. And what he's doing is he's running the house so that if any one of you guys want to go, you guys can go and stay at the house with Ryan and then go to the funeral. So, you know, um, Drea says that she wants to go. Um, I can't think of the other dude's name. I can't think of his name right off the top of the dome. But the other dude wants to go. I, I, sorry, I can't think of his name right now. And Jess is going to go. But Fly is not going to go. And Fly can't. Fly is not going to go because he can't leave the state. And Prince is not going to go because he has his son that weekend. So... Unfortunately, he can't go. And, you know, Drea let us know that she lost her mom. You know, oh, that is on my head. Yeah. I never, I thought that was on the camera. It was on my head. Then I thought it was on the cap. But, um, yeah. So, you know, Drea lost her mom. And Drea said a true, true statement. A statement that I've been dealing with for the last almost three years of my life. When my mom passed away, it was like a, a big chunk of me, a big piece of me died with her. And, you know, with time, it's gotten, it's, it's gotten manageable, but it still hurts nonetheless. But like I said, it's gotten manageable over time. So then we do see Fly and Prince, so they're going to go pick up his son. So we also find out that Fly and his baby mama, they haven't talked in about six or seven months because he went to jail because he had he got pulled over, he had an unregistered gun in the car with him, and you know she just hadn't talked to him since then. And you know they only have communication. Well, they don't even really communicate, like I said. But what they do is he picks his son up from his his godmother's house. She drops him off. He picks him up, and they don't see each other. And I'm like, that's not really good. I mean, you guys are. I mean, you would want to be co-parenting with your son. He's three years old. He's able to, you know realize that there's something off between mommy and daddy so you guys should want to figure that out work that out but you know and that's exactly what fly was telling him like it's after this all this time you two need to sit down and have a conversation with each other and i'm like that's true they definitely do need to sit down and have a conversation with one another but let's move on you guys all right you guys so these next three things that i'm gonna talk about i'm gonna group them all together because they weren't spectacularly long so it wasn't much that i could talk about with them now one of them i might go a little bit deep into it but at the shop we saw well actually no we saw the crew so they made it to new orleans they get to the house ryan is there he welcomes you know all of them there and um you know ryan also lets it be known that he's checked in on charmaine you know charmaine is doing as good as she can be right now you know granted with the situation that she's going through and, uh, you know, she's just talking about, you know, we saw him FaceTime her and she was just talking about how things are hard for her, which I can only, I can imagine, you know, Charmaine and I have, uh, definitely have something in common. We're both only children and, you know, she planned her mother's funeral, just like I planned my mom's funeral. And that was just something that I knew that I would have to do one day. But when it happened, I'm just like, I didn't expect for it to happen then. And thank God that I have, you know, one of my aunts was right there beside beside me the whole entire time because when we first went to the funeral home and they wanted to talk to me i'm like i don't want to and, and i said it i said i don't want to do this like how how am i supposed to sit here and plan my mom's funeral like i don't want to do this i don't want to be in this position like i, I don't want to make these decisions something you guys i'm not crying some got in my eye but I was just like, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. Like, this is not, this is not at all what I wanted. And I'm going to tell you guys a conversation that I had with my mom. Actually, a few months before she passed away, like, 
you know, we were talking and, you know, she always told me, she said, Jerome, you, you do realize I'm getting older. And she would always say that, like, you know, mama's not going to be here forever. And I'm like, I know that. And I made her cry one day because this conversation that I'm talking about, she cried because I told her, I said to her, these are my words verbatim. I told her in this conversation that she was saying, you know, I'm not going to be here forever. And I told my mom, I said, you know, I would, I would rather me not be here than you not be here. Because I told her, I'm like, I don't know how I can go through my life. I don't know how I can function. I don't know how I can live in this world and you're not here with me. And like I said, you guys, she started crying. And then I started crying because I'm like, why are you crying? She says, and she told me, she says, Jerome, I've lived my life. She said, you have to live your life, and I want you to be around here. Live your life. You're young, because at this time, I was 26 years old. She's like, Jerome, you're young. She says, Mama has lived her life, so I'm okay. You know, she says, I'm okay. And, you know, I was just like, I get that. And I told her, I'm like, I definitely get that, but I'm like, you are the most important thing. You're the most important thing, and you're the most important person to me. And I'm just like, I don't understand how I, how I can manage to even live my life without you. And I'm still still struggling with that so much. You know, it's, it's a struggle every day. Because my mom and I talked almost, we talked almost every day. And if there was, you know, she wouldn't let too, she wouldn't let too much time go by and, and, you know, not call me and vice versa. Like, if I left home on a Sunday night and by Tuesday or Wednesday she hadn't heard from me, she's calling to check on me. So it's just, it's it's a transition that I'm, you know, dealing with. Not hearing from her, not hearing her voice, not talking to her, not seeing her. So it's just, it's definitely a transition. So I definitely understand, you know, where Charmaine's coming from. I understand Kitty. I understand, you know, going to Love and Hip Hop. I understand Trina. I understand Drea, like I understand all of their pain because it's a pain that, I, you know, like I said, I'm dealing with myself. But let's move on, you guys. Um, So then we move, go to Second City, Inc. So at Second City, Inc., we see Fly. There's this girl that comes in and she wants this tattoo of a, um, what was it? She, um, a family tree. And, you know, he did the tattoo. Nice tattoo. I, I thought, I'm like, okay, cool. That was a nice tattoo. Now, where she got that tattoo, I'm like, God damn, I know she's in some serious, serious ass pain. So, we move on and we see Four. So, Four and his alleged daughter of his, they go to get manicures. Now, I'm cool. I'm, you know, I ain't going to say too much on it because, you know, Four is going to do what Four wants to do. But I think it's a little, I think, in a sense, Four is jumping the gun a little bit soon because you haven't done a DNA test with this girl and there's nothing wrong with you wanting to, you know, connect with this girl, getting to know this girl. But what'll, ha what'll happen if you do this DNA, DNA test, you and her have gotten cool, you've gotten a bond with each other, and then it just breaks like that. And I'm not saying that he would, you know, necessarily be like, oh, you know, I'm not your daddy, so I don't fuck with you no more. What I'm saying is y'all develop this connection with one another. And, you know, you develop this, this father-daughter relationship with one another. And then you go take the DNA test and boom, she's not your kid. And I think, in a sense, I think, I feel like Four is afraid of something. Because he did connect on the situation of not, know, you know, she doesn't, she didn't, you know, she grew up not knowing who her dad was. He grew up the same way. And I understand that pain as well. It's not, actually, it's not a pain for me. But I understand that situation of wanting to know where you came from, who's your family. I understand that vividly well because that's the reason that my birth mother and I are not as close as we could be because, you know, she refuses to tell me who my birth father is. And I said, I think I might say this in another video, but it took me losing my mom and my grandmother for me to say, wow, what was I look? what am I looking for? Am I trying to replace my mom? Am I trying to replace my grandmother? And when I came to the realization that that's not what I was trying to do, that was when I said in my heart, it's okay. If you never find out who your father is, it's fine. Like, I can live the rest of my life in peace. And I am living the rest of my life. I am living my life in peace, not knowing who he is. But you guys, um, we're just going to move on, okay? 
you guys, I try my hardest not to go deep in these videos sometimes, but then I, you know, get to talking and I end up doing one deep. So, so, so you guys, I do apologize. But uh, let's move on. So we see Prince. So he's meeting with his baby mama and they have their son. And, you know, they talk about their communication issues. And really, truly what it was for his baby mama, which I can't pronounce her name, and I'm not going to try to pronounce her name. But her issue with him was the fact that he got arrested, he went to jail. Now, if I'm not mistaken, didn't he say earlier in the episode he was only in jail for two days? I don't know. But, you know, she was just, she's upset about the fact that he did go to jail, leaving her, you know, to solely take care of their son. So I definitely understand that, like, because it was selfish. You, It was selfish, it was stupid. You got in the car, you got pulled over, you had a gun in the car with you that was unregistered. You put yourself in harm's way. So, yes, I definitely get where she comes from. It's with that one, it's stupidity. And you know what, he's like, you know what, finally talking to her, he's able to understand where she's coming from. It wasn't just about him, it was about their son. I'm like, you didn't, see, you didn't realize that from the beginning? But, you know, they, I guess they're going to take a step in the right direction with one another. So then let's just jump over to Don. So Don goes over to talk to Ford. And Ford is telling him that he met up with the girl and how they connected with each other. And Don was spitting some real facts to Ford. Ford is not really trying to listen to what Don is saying, but he really should listen to Don. Because Don just said what I was saying a few minutes ago. It's nothing wrong with him wanting to get to know this girl, but what if you take this DNA test? What if you and her have, you know, developed this bond with each other, and then you take this DNA test, and then, boom, she's not your daughter. And then, you know, you're heartbroken, she's heartbroken, and then, you know, things can happen. And I, I was like, exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking. And, you know, Don tells for like, man, just take the fucking DNA test. And I'm like, thank you. Just take this damn DNA test. And again, there is nothing wrong with, you know, for hanging out with the girl, getting to know the girl. That's cool. That's fine. But take the test to know for sure if you're her father and if you're not. If you're not, that's fine. If you want to, if, if you're not her father and you still want to have a relationship with this girl, that is okay. But at least then you know, this is not my child. And I'm not saying it. I don't mean to say it sound, sound you know, um, cruel, whatever. But what I'm just saying is, it's better to know that, hey, this is not my daughter. You can still build a relationship with her, but not a father-daughter relationship. You can just build a friendly relationship with her. Be a, you know, a male figure, you know, a positive male influence in her life. So there's nothing wrong with that. I think what Don said is absolutely correct. Four is afraid of something. I don't know what it is. Don really doesn't know what it is. And here's the thing with Don. I get it. I don't know why Don goes so upset. I mean, I guess it's because his it's his brother. He's wor he's worried about him. He's concerned about him. So I I guess I do. At the end of the day, I do see that one. So let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. So then to wrap this episode up, I first have to say rest in peace to Glenda. May you you know just may your soul and spirit find peace with the Lord. Um, wow. You know, I looked at Charmaine's dad when he came into that kitchen. And you could just tell that his, you could just see it all in his eyes and his face. And I'm just like, wow, man, that is, tr that's, that's true love right there. Like he was with her for 30 plus years. And just to see that, that, cause he's, you know, that pain, that agony. I just couldn't, I can't imagine what that feels like to wake up to someone every day for 30 something years, 30 plus years, wake up to them, go to sleep looking at them, and then you just, in a blink of an eye, they're gone, they're not here, you have to go home to the home that you shared, you raise your child in, and just know that that person will never grace those halls, you know, never cook in the kitchen, never fuss at you, never do anything again. Like that is just got to be so heartbreaking. Like I just can't imagine what he's going through. Like I really can't. And then, you know, Charmaine, I'm going to jump a little ahead. I'm going to jump to something she said earlier in this in, later in the episode. So, you know, she was talking about her, her dad was talking about how he wants to be with his, her mom again. And I'm like, 
Oh, wow, man. Like, I know that's got to be heartbreaking. Like I said, just to go home. The home that you guys raised your child, you built your family in, you raised your daughter in. You know, God, that is, that's got to be, that's got to be the one of the worst feelings in the world. Like I can only, you know, I can, I know what it's like to lose a parent, but to be with someone for that amount of years and then just be separated, couldn't imagine. So my heart goes out to Charmaine's dad as well. So definitely goes out to Charmaine's dad. So, you know, we see the funeral. They're on their way to the funeral, actually. And, and my heart broke again for him when he said he wants his Glenn in the back. I'm like, God, that poor man. So, you know, they get to the funeral. And I was, con now, I was really confused because, you know, we could see in, in, we could see, you know, in the church. And you can see the casket. And I'm like, so, I know, and I saw this open casket for a minute. And I can see, I'm like, oh my God, like, wow. I would have never imagined that they would actually film inside the church. You can see in the casket, like you can literally see in the casket. Because Ryan hugged her dad. And then, you know, the can, the, he, can, Ryan kind of moved. And you can, see, you can see her face. I'm like, oh my God. Like, that's the thing about me. You know, when I go to funeral, I can't really, I don't like to look at, you know, the person in the casket. And I know that that's just, that's just a shell. I know that. I know that. But it's, it's just something about seeing someone that you love in that casket. Like, what? Like, on my grandmother, like, and I was a Paul, I was a Paul bearer. For, <clears throat> I was a Paul bearer. So I was on the front row. So I had this out and I was like, oh my God, when I opened the casket, I wasn't ready because I actually didn't go, with, I didn't go with my mom when they did the viewing of her body, you know, they, they did the, little, the final viewing before they made her, you know, made it public for the, you know, everyone to come and see. I didn't do that. Cause I'm like, I, I can't, I'm like, I can't look at her. I like, I don't want to like, like, I, I mean, like I said a few minutes ago, I know it is a shell. I know that that person is not there, but I, it's just, it makes it, it makes for me, what it does when you see when I see a body, it makes it final. I know that might not make sense to some people, but seeing the body just it just makes it just finalizes it for me. And that's how it was for me at my mom's funeral, because I, I I didn't want to, I really really did not want to you know see her body when I you know fixed her up. I didn't want to see it, but they were like you know we need you to okay you know we need you to okay this. Before we do, you know, before we put her out for, you know, people to come do the viewing. And I'm just like, I, I'm like, I don't want to see her. Like, that's not my, I mean, that's her body, but that's not her. She's not there. And it's just like, it's very final. And then I remember the night of, the night before the funeral, I was just like, man. You know, that whole week, I dreaded, because we had her funeral on a Saturday. That whole entire week, I dreaded Saturday morning. I'm just like, I'm not at all ready for this. Like, this is my final, final goodbye. Like, this is going to be the last time, which I had a closed casket, so I didn't see her body. But I'm like, this is going to be the last time that we're in the same room with each other, I guess you could say. This is my, like, this is the last, last time that... My, you know, this is the last, final time of being surround, you know, being in the presence of her. I, I hope I'm explaining myself. I don't think I am, but you guys know what I mean. That was my final goodbye to my mom. And, it's, and, and you know, it was so sad for me. You know, I'm laughing. It's not, I'm not laughing to laugh. I'm laughing, you know, to keep myself from crying. But... The day of the funeral, we took her to our, you know, and my family, we have a, our own cemetery. So, you know, when we got out there and, you know, my cousin, you know, he, he, he um, I have, I have a lot of preachers in my family. So, you know, he did the little, you know, the, the ashes to ashes, dust to dust. He did all that stuff. And, you know, we got in the car, we got back in the family car 
and we just, you know, we left the cemetery and we were, you know, just driving off and I'm just looking and I'm, and I see them. Oh God, I don't even want to talk about this. Bear with me, you guys. Okay. Just bear with me. So we're leaving the cemetery, and I see them lowering her casket in the ground, and I'm just like, that is it. That's the final, that's the final thing to do, is to lower her casket in the ground. And I was just, and I, you know, I just, I just, at that, t at that point, I just felt so many emotions run over me at that time, just knowing that that was, that was it. It was over. It was over at that point. All right, you guys, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to, you know, I really did not mean to just dampen the mood. I'm so sorry. But, um, yeah, so let's just get back to the show real quick. So, um, so we see everybody showing up for the funeral. We see the Second City Inc. people show up. We see Ryan there. We saw Kitty there. And we also saw Kat there as well. Oh. And then Danielle was there also. So, you know, um, after the funeral, Danielle, Ryan, and Charmaine were talking. And this is the first time that they've all been able to be in the same room with each other. And nothing happened. You know, Ryan said he can be cool with Kat, which, I mean, you should be shit. That shit happened years ago, so let's move on from it. So then, you know, um, we found out that Kitty did um, Charmaine's mom's makeup. And, you know, uh... Charmaine goes and talks to Kitty, and she was talking to Kitty, you know, asking her about the stuff with Ryan, you know, after Sky opened her big ass mouth saying that, you know, Kitty was fucking Ryan. <laughs> so the producers asked Kitty about that, and she says, you know, Ryan and I, we cool, we're friends, and we support each other. And they're like, do you support each other? Is it kind of, is it back support? <laughs> and Kitty started laughing, back support? Do you mean like laying down on my back? If Kenya and Ryan are fucking, who cares? Who the fuck cares? Like, I don't get why C's made such a big deal about Kitty and Ryan fucking. Like, you and Kitty ain't been together in how long? So shut the fuck up and move the fuck on. Like, damn. Go be with Crystal and her new jaw. Go be with her. Go be with her. Go find Duchess. Go find anybody. Um. So, you know, um, Charmaine also tells Kitty, like, hey, if shit don't work out with you in New York... You can always come to Second City and can have a job. And Jess was like, wait a minute. And her, you know, in her green screen, she's like, wait a minute. I thought we, you know, you should run this by me. I'm like, oh God, here we go with this shit. This is like the KP shit from Black Ink Crew Compton. I'm just like, oh the fuck, here we go. But you guys, that was Black Ink Crew Chicago. Um, be sure to like this video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification button so you guys know when I drop anything else. Um, share this video, and if you guys want to follow me on social media, I am on Twitter at JB underscore the underscore CEO. I am on Snapchat at JB says what, and I am also on uh nope nope Snapchat is not JB says what. Snapchat is Mr GB underscore it is to you, and my Instagram is JB says what. So to the next video, you guys, which is going to be the Oval, I will catch you guys later.